Lesson 3.2, Properties of Parallel Lines. This is kind of where things start getting more complex and not more challenging, just there's things are going to expand exponentially from here. Once you have parallel lines, we've done a lot of groundwork with postulates and theorems and proofs and deductive reasoning and just basic stuff about angles and supplementary and complementary. Now we really get into the meat of geometry. So this is really the starting point for me in terms of proofs that make sense in terms of problems that have lots of skill sets, not just did you know they were supplementary, then you add them together, made 180. So here we go. Um, number one, corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent. Uh, and that's a situation like this. We would say angle one is congruent to angle two. We can't prove it. It's just like Unit 1, where we're at the beginning of things, and you have to just take some things for assumptions. So what would you call this here? Hopefully you know. Postulate. All right. And that is, like I said, the starting point for, like, everything. I mean, it gets a little bit crazy. And um, this is the transversal. And a transversal is just a line that cuts two other lines. Kind of silly. I know I've mentioned that before. These lines are parallel, so we need to put this on each one. It means parallel lines. And you may or may not have noticed that there's no arrows here at the end. And there won't be any more. You can assume that their lines go forever and ever. We don't want to because of these arrows. They mean parallel. We don't want them at the end confusing people saying, oh, they're parallel. They're not. So now we start going from that one thing to theorems. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, Then alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate interior are things like this, and they're congruent. So let's do a proof. Uh, that's a pretty lame given statement, but you get the idea. So you would say, let's add the number three. Angle two is congruent to angle three. Corresponding angles. You would then say, angle one is congruent to angle three. Vertical angles. And hopefully you know the last step. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Substitution. So we got some simple proofs now, and hopefully they are making a lot more sense. You can look at it and say, oh, I probably wouldn't have thought of that myself, but I understand what you did and why you did it. Two more theorems, two parallel lines. Hang on, I want to check something. Yeah, I did, made sure they were parallel. Two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. And same side interior angles are supplementary. Again, I'm not going to get too detailed into the proof, but you would add a 3. And you would say measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180. Angle postulate, supplementary line, angles, uh, angle addition postulate, whatever you want to do. Then you would say angle 3 is congruent to angle 2. And then you would just do some substitution. And I leave it for you to figure out why on that one. Hopefully you know. 
And theorem four, one of my duh theorems. If you've got two parallel lines at a right angle, it's perpendicular to the other one. And this, I'm not even going to do the proof. If this is angle one and this is angle two, you know they're congruent. Let's just say you were in this situation. You know that measure of angle two equals 90 degrees because of corresponding angles. These are corresponding angles. So they have to both be there. Now, I've already answered this. But let's do it twice. Both of these lines, these pairs of lines are parallel to each other, not across. But so you put the little arrow on there, that means parallel. Well, you get another pair of parallel lines in the diagram. How do you show those? Put two arrows. That means these two are parallel. That's it. Lots and lots of problems. If you just remember these basics, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles are both congruent, and same side interior, sum up to 180, you're good to go. Good luck.